You know, I had a friend, um, a psychologist, who said, laws are made when spirit fails. And in one way, I think that's a very interesting perspective, that if we all had our hearts in the right places and we were all doing the right things all the time, we wouldn't need to be regulated and structured. But on the other hand, um, there's anarchy that's possible. And to have a system of the law that works and that reflects the authentic values of a culture in the best possible way is a really inspiring goal. I think a lot of, um, a lot of the law has greater depth and potential than we realize because we're trained to use it in a rather narrow and strategic way. But I think that if we expand the options and, um, and look at that place, not where, where law and spirit are separate, but where law and spirit come together, that's a very high aspiration. And, and where the people who are working in the law are congruent, where what they're doing in their daily work is really congruent with their higher value system. That, to me, is a, a, the higher calling of the law. You know, I've, I've thought a lot since uh, leaving my law practice and then coming back into the law about whether there was something missing in legal education. And for me, in looking back at it, I think that the emphasis on the rational and the logical and the cognitive process by implication and well and sometimes explicitly said emotion doesn't have any place in the law and I think I can speak for myself I bought into that culture so completely that I lost touch with my own emotional scope I think that happens to a lot of lawyers. They forget how to feel because it's not important, or they're told that it's not important in the law school setting. And that carries over into their lives. Um, there have been really, really interesting things going on in neuroscience these days. They're fascinating experiments. And one of the things that's been discovered is that People who make decisions purely from a rational basis can make very bad decisions. The emotional brain and the capacity for an intuitive element to come into decision making is what makes for a really um, sturdy decision, a good decision, a decision that's a durable decision. Purely rational decisions can be totally when, when someone gets a vantage point on them, can be just totally wrong and sometimes cruel. But when that emotional element is allowed to um, come in, it informs the rational process in a really potent way. And beyond that, of course, you know, the emotional lives of lawyers sometimes are just, um, it, the divorce rate is bad, Lawyers have so many problems as a, as a group. Um, all the statistics about lawyers who are depressed, who have different kinds of psychological problems, it's heartbreaking, again, to have such a talented population. And I think a large part of the suffering is because of being severed from feelings, from emotions, and from the body of basically just turning into a talking head. So um, the, the whole issue of lawyers and emotions is a really compelling one for me. I think it's, it's something that needs to be reintegrated into law school in a really healthy way. When I was in law school, and even now because I've been surveying, people say that the goal of law school is to teach people to think like a lawyer. And, and I can't speak for others, but I thought that that just meant another way of thinking in addition to whatever vague way I already thought. 
What I didn't realize was that it was a whole complete change in my entire thought process that would then dominate the way that I engaged with everything in my life. So I've come to believe that thinking like a lawyer is not like a, a new little toolkit. It's taking on a whole new rational worldview. And I think in some ways that's entirely healthy. Um, people who have studied the development of consciousness suggest that the rational worldview is a, um, developmentally a stage that, um, that allows us to see that there are two sides of things, that allows us to see that, whoa, that, you know, it's not just me and my side and what I have to say, but that someone else may also have a legitimate perspective that I can get my mind around and I can even see and stand in their shoes. So lawyers learn to do that and that's a great skill. What they don't know is that there are limitations to that consciousness and there are even broader, higher levels of consciousness beyond that such as, for example, a holistic view that is a much, it's, a, it, it's like an umbrella saying, yes, there are these two views, and then there's an entire range around and between. So, you know, it's, um, I think that part of the, the problem of the legal profession is also that there's not a sense of where do we go from here. There's somewhere to go in terms of our awareness, in terms of the way we see the world. And because there's no guidance for broader vision, I think it can be very frustrating for intelligent, capable people who just, they don't know that there are other ways of being.